So I have questions here. We're going to talk about dirty lekka or what I call dirty lekka. If I have a product that I'm very happy with and it usually comes in a clear bag where you can see the content and now it comes in a closed bag, you can't see what's going on inside the bag, I immediately get very, very suspicious. So if you've clicked on this video, let me know if you have similar situations with the products that you buy on a regular and suddenly their packaging changes. Does that raise your suspicions as well? Uh, thank you for joining me on this video here. It's not like I'm annoyed. The fact that I can still source a form of LECA, I should consider myself lucky because we have lots of LECA, but most of our LECA here that I can find floats, which is pointless for growing orchids in a self-watering setup. So when I saw these bags, I was immediately suspicious and dubious and I'm like oh please no why do you do this because to me there's a problem with the quality if you're not prepared to show what's inside the bag then there's a problem especially if your bags were first of all a clear like a see-through I could see the product yes all the little prints were on but it was transparent and I opened the bag and you will be seeing some pictures now of what I call dirty lecker and the dirty lecker is what I call when it is so broken up and you can see all the little shreds and the broken pieces, the tiny little pieces. And that really, really bothers me. The tiny little shards. Eventually, I guess I can sift them out at some point and get my lecker back to something constructive and properly usable. But the whole thing about this LECA thing is the sphere packing, which doesn't compress the media inside the pot, but the roots find their way through all those little nooks and crannies. And it is better for the aeration within the pot when you flush or just for oxygen purposes inside the pot. And if you don't have adequate or ideal sphere packing, then you're already eliminating a lot of that oxygenation that goes on inside the pot whether you flush or not so now let's have a look at my buckets here I have on the left is the black bucket on the bag of what I call dirty lecker I bought two so I'm just gonna put a disclaimer out there it might be that I got a really bad bag and the other bag is good again I will update you should I find out that is the case Upon opening the lecker, in order to sterilize it, boil it, clean it, etc., I already saw all those little particles. In a way, I could feel it through the bag. I just wanted to be wrong. I wanted to believe that maybe I got a smaller sized lecker. But anyway, you can see on the left here what I call my dirty lecker, and on the right here, my clean lecker. Same product, same brand, same company. These were in a transparent bag. And I don't think I have to go into too much detail. You can see the difference in how many are broken here on the left as opposed to the right. There is obviously always some little form of crack and breakage and in the processing when they ship it and they stack it onto the pallets. You know, things get chipped. That's normal. But you can see the clear difference between this lecker and that lecker. All these broken pieces here have also got the shards in the pot, all of them. Now I have also been rinsing and rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat to leach this leka out a little bit from the minerals. And it's been over two weeks now. In the first week I took out the RO water it was sitting in every 24 hours. My RO water that goes in is six parts per million. And then the first day after 24 hours, I registered a jump of 175 parts per million of having leached out whatever is in the LECA. Took it out, rinsed it out, put fresh RO water in. The next day it had jumped to 270 after 24 hours. So for the following days, I did rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, soak 
And then by the end of the week, after 24 hours, I got it down to 60. The second week, I didn't do this every day. I took every second day. So after two days, this water would be up to 115 parts per million. And now it's been in this water like this for about four days. And I haven't measured it. But I wanted to do a comparison on camera with my clean lecker that's always been soaking in my bucket. And all this, mind you, is recycled and is just ready to go. And compare with my old lecker that is now almost, almost three weeks. Rinse, repeat, soak, rinse, repeat, soak, and added fresh RO water. And let's see what the parts per million is after a few days in this bucket. Let's have a look-see. And I always put the probe right to touch the lecker, giving me the right reading. If I lift it up here, it'll always fluctuate. So I always touch the lecker. And I'm at 138 now, and this is after a few days of it just soaking. So for me, I've leached out enough of the excess minerals and materials from this lecker in order to be able to use it when I'm ready to do so. Let's measure this one. This is the one I've had for many years. It's been recycled, boiled and recycled. It's at 63 after weeks and weeks and weeks in its bucket. I haven't changed this water for ages. 64, that's pretty good. That to me is super clean. So in future, what I can do, what I'm going to do clearly is either mix up half and half, depending on what's going in the pot. If I have fine rooted orchids, it can go in the dirty lecker because the sphere packing is not as important because it's more water retentive. If I have big chunky orchids roots, then it's gonna be used, this lecker is going to be used. But one day, obviously, I am going to go back and I will never ever have a super clean lecker because this will all be mixed up one day. And the reason I'm bringing this subject up, there's millions of these little shards in this bucket. Every time I rinse and repeat, I try to clean out the strainer. You can see how these little shards are all over the place. And the reason I'm a little bit annoyed is A, why are you changing the quality of your product? And B, the density arrangement within my pots is gonna change. If I don't have the adequate sphere packing that clean lecker would give me, leaving lots of spaces between each lecker bead, then the density changes in my pot. And I'm gonna have to get used to that. And this looks like it's also smaller pieces to what I have over here. But that could just be because the heavier, the bigger pieces have sunk to the bottom. But yeah, this is what I consider dirty lacquer. And I'm really, really annoyed. Really annoyed. I just wanted to bring that to your attention in case you have something similar and you think it's okay. It's not. Brands will vary for that, that's for sure. Every brand will vary, I get it. But when I've been using the same brand over years and years and years, and then I see bags that are not transparent anymore. My alarm bells start to ring, and in this case, they were justified. We'll have to see about the next bag, if this is just a one-off. But yeah, this is what I call dirty lecker, even though it is clean and the parts per million is coming down and it's not going to affect my roots, it's gonna affect the climate of my pots. And that is an issue. You look at all those, these shards fill in the blanks. They change the density arrangement. And that's annoying. Anyway, just wanted to bring that to your attention. See what you have to say about it. If you have anything, any thoughts on this at all, I'd be interested to know. So I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video and I hope that your lecca is always clean and pristine and may your orchids grow and thrive and that you have a wonderful day. Take care, everybody.
Stay safe. Bye.